I recently began rewatching the Fallout TV series on Amazon Prime, and while I was, I began to realize something. Although the visual inspiration for the show seems to come primarily from Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, with things such as the power armor, fusion cores, and some of the weapons that we see, like the assault rifle that's used by Knight Titus, a lot of the inspiration for the overall story and the themes seem to come more from Fallout 3. This does make sense, as the director Jonathan Nolan for the show did say in an interview that Fallout 3 was his introduction to the world of Fallout, and he joked that he spent so much time playing it that when it came out, he didn't write movies for two whole years. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the parallels that I noticed between the story of Lucy McLean and that of the Lone Wanderer from Fallout 3. Spoiler warning for the Fallout TV show, as this video will contain major plot spoilers that take place throughout the entire series. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. Fallout 3 begins with the birth of the Lone Wanderer. Although not technically born within the vault, the Lone Wanderer does enter the vault at such a young age that they do not remember ever living on the surface. Similarly, Lucy does not remember having spent any time on the surface when she was a child, until it is later revealed in the show that she lived with her mom in Shady Sands for some amount of time before being taken back to the vault by her father. Both Lucy and the Lone Wanderer are raised to uphold a core ethic of being merciful and just towards others. Lucy's ethic is embodied in the Golden Rule, and the Lone Wanderer's is embodied in the passage from the Bible, Revelation 21.6. The Lone Wanderer lives a fairly normal life in the vault, learns to shoot through target practice, just as Lucy does during the show. Both the Lone Wanderer and Lucy are eventually forced out of the vault to search for their fathers in the midst of a vault-wide emergency. In Lucy's case, it is the Raiders and Moldaver attacking the vault and kidnapping the father, while for the Lone Wanderer, it is their father leaving that causes the Radroach infestation. Both Lucy and the Lone Wanderer are blinded upon leaving the vault for the first time and eventually make their way to the nearest major settlement where they are able to find some information about where they can find their fathers. As a side note, since we know that the completion of the Wasteland Survival Guide is canon, it's also safe to say that both Lucy and the Lone Wanderer complete a side quest at a super duper mart while on the hunt for their fathers. Both Lucy and the Lone Wanderer team up with a or multiple members of the Brotherhood of Steel in hopes that their assistance can help them find and or rescue their fathers. I don't know who you are, but you don't belong here. The super mutants have overrun our brothers at the Galaxy News radio building, and we're headed there to back them up. You can tag along if you want, but keep your head down and try not to do anything stupid. Admittedly, this is a bit of a weaker parallel, but both Lucy and the Lone Wanderer also meet a DJ as part of their journeys. The look on your face says it all. You're wondering who the heck this guy is and why you should care. Well, prepare to be enlightened. I am Three Dog, jockey of discs and teller of truths, lord and master over the finest radio station to grace the wastes, Galaxy News Radio. And you, well, I know who you are. Heard about you leaving that vault, traveling the unknown, just like dear old dad, huh? Met him already. You wanna find your dad. And it just so happens his location is known to yours truly. He was here at Galaxy News. We had a great conversation. He's a real stand-up guy. If you wanna know more, you're gonna have to contribute to the good fight. Hey, all right! The hero of the wasteland returns. 
when your dad passed through here, he and I talked for a good long time. He's a real stand-up kind of guy. He mentioned some scientific mumbo-jumbo, which didn't make sense to me, and mentioned something called Project Purity. He also said something about going to visit a Dr. Lee in Rivet City. Then he left in a hurry. Goodbye. Remember to keep us tuned in while you're out there. And watch yourself. Look, this is a restricted area. I'm tired of telling you people. I... It's you. My heavens, you look so much like him. You're James's daughter, aren't you? What are you doing here? Your father insisted that we return to work on Project Purity. I tried telling him too much time has passed. There's no way it would work. Predictably, he refused to listen to me. He says he can prove it will work and head it off to the old lab. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. When the Lone Wanderer and Lucy finally find each of their fathers, they realize that the impetus for their disappearance each was a scientific MacGuffin that would solve some major resource shortage that was happening in their wasteland. In the Lone Wanderer's case, James leaves the vault in search of a Gek to complete Project Purity, which would provide plentiful water to the capital wasteland. In Lucy's case, Hank was kidnapped because he had the code to unlock Cold Fusion, which would offer plentiful power to Los Angeles. You've saved me. I was afraid I'd be trapped in there forever. Oh, it's so good to see you, but what are you doing here? I was right about Braun. The technology he developed is unstable and even dangerous, but it can be adapted for Project Purity. I need to return to Rivet City and talk with Madison. If we can find a Gek, we can make Project Purity work. That's my girl. Let's hurry. Now that I know what we need, I want to get back to work as soon as possible. However, despite the many parallels between the characters of Lucy and the Lone Wanderer, we realize at the end of the series that the two fathers that they have been chasing after could hardly be further characters apart from one another. James is a flawed father, but everything he does is ultimately in the hopes of completing Project Purity and providing clean water to the wasteland, a mission that he eventually sacrifices his life for. Hank, on the other hand, is merely a tool for Vault Tech, willing to sacrifice the lives of thousands of innocent people for the sake of Vault Tech's mission of being the only humans left to inherit the Earth. In this way, Hank's reveal as the secret villain in the final episode parallels the reveal of the terrible things that Sean does in Fallout 4. Sean has a similar goal, that the people of the Institute would be the only ones left to inherit the Earth once the surface dwellers die out. Although we know how the story ends for the Lone Wanderer, Lucy's story has at least one more season of Fallout to tell. I'm interested to see where they take Lucy's character and wonder if they'll take more story and thematic inspiration from New Vegas in season two, since Vegas will be the setting for at least part of the season. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. And if you'd like to see more of this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you again for watching, and goodbye.